today we are going to prove the prime number theorem and this essentially follows from everything we have done so far plus the Bitsum problem we have talked. So, what did the problems if you remember one of the Bitsum problem was that uh, if you consider We consider a rectangle here. One minus one over log t. Let's give it a name R t, and you know that. Z was a order log t. And zeta prime z is order log square t. Well, absolute value. This is on the boundary or the question. Did I ask was the question of about the boundary or was it in overall? No, both. 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 overall and, and the step, step two was, was so yeah, once you calculate overall boundary, it is pretty straightforward. So these are the two uh, results that we will make use of. And so now come with this come to the theorem statement that uh, zeta. Z is not zero for log to the I think seven or so. So, what does this say in terms of the picture that we have? So, we know that zeta is not 0 on the right of the line z equals 1, right, uh, rather sigma equals 1. And what this theorem is saying is that for a little less sigma just a little less and that less becomes lesser and lesser as we increase t right as t goes to infinity this is converging towards 1 ok. So, it is something like a curve like this which as t goes towards infinity it reaches one. So, that is this is the curve and then in this region entire region zeta z is not 0. So, no 0 of the zeta function lies in this region which automatically translates to the prime number theorem. So, what is the corollary of this? that uh, psi of x is x plus order how much so if the zeros were at only at sigma equals half then it would be error would be square root of x times log square but now they are not they are away from how therefore much closer to 1. So, what will come out is something like x to the 1 minus small o of 1 
something very very small there inversely proportional kind of going very kind of decaying towards zero but going up but i'll not do that part because this is sufficient to essentially imply all of this so let's do the proof of this so we'll just look at this case that at the height t you have this uh, So we have this uh, curve or a rectangle on on the boundary of which we know how the zeta behaves. Fine. Okay. So let's uh, first do something very nice, which is uh, let's start with the definition of zeta z, and here we'll so always assume. Z is sigma plus i t. Okay, so we fix the height t and vary the uh, real part between two and coming towards becoming a little less than one, something up to this point. To begin with, we'll just vary it, start from two and go towards this side, towards one, but not quite reaching one. So in that region. We know what zeta that the using this uh, original definition. This is a product over all prime p. This is one over one minus one over p to the. Okay. For one less than sigma less. Than Take log on both sides. Okay. And now expand this log also around one, and then you get. Uh, get another series here which is uh, m greater than equal to 1 i think and this is 1 by log of 1 minus x is x x square by 2 x cube by 3 so that's how it goes so this m p to the m z And let's combine this and write them as, uh, which I can. So this is running over all prime speed. These are running over all powers m essentially, right? So um, this will run through all numbers n, except for number zero, uh, number one. One will not occur here because m equals zero is not. All other parts are there, so this is a but this still this is running over all prime powers to get rid of prime other numbers. We stick a lambda in here, which is a 0 whenever n is not a prime power. So that takes care of that. So when n is prime power, this is log of. So if n is p to the m, this is log p. Okay. And uh, so this becomes n to the z. And what do we do about this? See, when 
n is p to the m then this is p to the mz what is log n m log p and what is lambda n log p so log p log p cancels and you get 1 over n right so that is uh, an alternative expression for uh, log of zeta when uh, real part is greater than 1 okay. Now let us do a little bit more work here real part of log zeta is what looking at this and to this sigma. So, I can write z see z is sigma plus i t that is we have to keep in mind for the entire proof. So, I can break this n to the z as n to the sigma plus n to the i t and so this is will be cos of n to the i t is e to the i t log n and when you go from numerator uh, denominator numerator it becomes negative. So, cos of minus but that is also cos of plus that is no problem. So, this is cos of t log n okay. okay. Now, by the way this is also equal to log of absolute value of zeta okay log of absolute value of a number is really the real part of log of a number that is true. Now, we use a simple trigonometric identity which is a what is that involving cos 2 theta cos theta cos 2 theta is a 2 cos theta minus 1 right. So, let us I just want to write it in some in a way that becomes positive. So, just involve cos 2 theta cos theta and 1 and create a perfect square how do we do that. So, we get cos square theta by this now I need to get the rest of it. So, make this a perfect square 2 cos square theta plus what else do you need? plus uh, 4 cos theta plus 2 minus 4 cos theta minus 3. Does this make sense? Okay. So, this means 3 plus 4 cos theta plus cos 2 theta is 2 times cos theta plus 1 whole square. Which is greater than or equal to 0. This is the key point that I want to focus on. Okay, so, let me explain what I am trying to do. If you look at this expression this is greater than or equal to 0 log of n is greater than or equal to 0 because n is greater than 1 n to the sigma is greater than or equal to 0 
which is sigma is between 1 and 2 this is the only quantity that can become negative fine. So, I want this expression make to make this expression always greater than or equal to 0. So, what do I do to do ensure this well the simplest way is to add some things to this. So, that this cos becomes bigger than greater than or equal to 0 always and that is this is the trick which we use. So, using this what we can say is 3 log zeta of sigma plus 4 log zeta of sigma plus i t plus log zeta of sigma plus 2 i t is greater than equal to 0 that is all I want ok. And this gives us so now these are all logs and sums of logs. So, obviously, I can write rewrite this as log of absolute value of zeta sigma q right or zeta sigma whole cube let us write it this way zeta of sigma plus i t to the 4 greater than equal to 0 and this of course means that the product of absolute values of this quantity is greater than equal to 1 and this is a very important identity for us because now we can use this to argue some interest we essentially argue the prime number theorem. So, what this is saying is that sigma now notice that sigma is approach we can it is between 1 and 2. So, I can take it towards 1 right, but looking at the right hand side of this this product always stays greater than or equal to 1. So, you can take it as close to 1 as possible it will stay product will stay greater than or equal to 1. In fact, now then then we I can use the continuity to actually take it to 1 and the product will stay at greater than or equal to 1 even at sigma equals 1 right because sigma zeta function as an analytic continuation at sigma equals 1. So, once I take the analytic continuation and take those values this product has to remain greater than equal to 1 ok. Now, suppose um, now ok now one more thing is that um, how would that product stay greater than or equal to 1 that is one thing that I want us to think about. As sigma goes towards 1 zeta of sigma goes to infinity ok. So, that will really make it bigger and bigger. So, that will like try to satisfy this and as long as these two characters remain bounded it is going to shoot up and problem is solved. The problem may occur when zeta of sigma plus i t is a 0 or rather zeta of 1 plus i t is a 0. In that case that 0 will try to cancel out this this guy diverging ok. Now, 
who will win? That is that is the next question, one is going to shoot up, one is going to send it to 0, that is also easy to decide, who will win? You can look at the expression and tell me who will win. The order, see order of 0 and order of pole, what is the order of, of pole at zeta 1? 1, so zeta cube will have order 3, so it will be I mean zeta uh, zeta of 1 or zeta of sigma around 1 will behave like 1 over sigma minus 1 and the cube of it will behave like 1 over sigma minus 1 cubed. Now if this is a pole, uh, sorry if this is a 0 at sigma equals 1, so sigma minus 1 will be a factor of this as sigma tends towards 1 and since this is a fourth power this will be a 0 of order 4. So that 0 of order 4 will cancel out the pole of order 3 and there will still be left 1 0 of order 1. So these two will together still go towards 0. So now comes the third character, now this third guy may still want send it to infinity or at least keep it above 1 provided this also has a pole of order at least 1. If it is not a pole of order 1, then this whole thing goes to 0, right. But does it have a pole of order 1? No, zeta function has only one pole, which is at sigma equals 1, nothing nowhere else. So this will be bounded. This does go, this is together is a pole of order 3, this is a 0 of order at least 4, if not more. So this product will go towards 0 if zeta of 1 plus i t which is not possible, we just this inequality tells us it is not possible. Therefore, this is not clear. And T was arbitrary here. So it says that on that line sigma equals 1, the zeta function is never 0. So there is no 0 of the zeta function lying on that line. So this at least already shows part of the theorem, we, it does not quite show the full theorem because the full theorem says that actually there is a small region to the left of that line also where there is no 0, but at least it shows that on that line there is no 0. Now to show that we can go slightly beyond this line, well we use uh, uh, this uh, the two things that we learnt, okay. Starting from this expression, so we will, uh, we have already argued from this expression, but let us continue for our argument a little more. We have zeta cube, zeta of sigma cube and uh, this fourth power of this and uh, this product is greater than or equal to 1. So let us rewrite this. I am interested in understanding the absolute value of this. This is greater than or equal to 1 over cubed, so this is the fourth power So now let us 
assume sigma to be just a little more than 1, let us fix it. There will be some constant C1 divided by log of t to the thing 9. Okay. So, this is just a little about, but no problem, this inequality holds there. At this value of sigma, what is uh, zeta of sigma like? Well, zeta of sigma zeta of alpha, at least the absolute value, behaves like. 1 over alpha minus 1 with residue is 1 there right. So, it is this plus a another the Taylor series if you higher power which sort of go vanish away when this is close to this right. So, for this this uh, this sigma is really very close to 1. So, we can assume that this is plug in this value of sigma because I have already fixed sigma. So, zeta of sigma will be, so this minus 1, 1 over this, so this is about order log to the 9, okay. fine. Okay. Now, next, so this gives an estimate of this, how does this grow, how does this grow? this I can write order equal to. How about this? This is where I am going to use the result root. On that line, entire in the entire line actually, uh, the value was um, so zeta of z was order log t, right. Z is sigma plus i t and sigma being anywhere between 1, little less than 1 to 2. So, at high 2 t, it will still be order log t, be an absolute value, right. So, zeta of sigma plus 2 i t, this is bounded by order log. Therefore, this is greater than equal to just plug in everything here. This is bounded, this is I mean this is an upper bound on this, the log t is upper bound on this. So, inverse size that is these are the lower bounds and then you multiply this out log to the 90 cubed 27 plus 1 more is order log to the 28 t. This is fourth power and this gives what? Minus 28, why minus 28? Minus 28, log to the minus 28. So, at that point, at that sigma, this is at least 1 over this. Now, let us go to the next page and let us look at very closely. This is 0, this is 1, this is t and this line a little here and a little there. So, I am going to look at these two points. This is sigma, a little more than 1. So, at this point, I know that zeta is um, at least 
greater than or equal to 1 over log to the 70. I also know that throughout this region, the derivative zeta prime alpha is order log square t for sigma greater than or equal to alpha greater than or equal to 2 minus sigma. Sigma is a little more less more than 1, so 2 minus sigma will be a little less, just the same quantity less than 1, so that is right. And zeta prime sigma plus i t is greater than or equal to order 1 by log to the 70. So, a function which changes from has certain value here and with a certain derivative along this way as we travel around this. Okay. The question is can it attain a 0 in this region? The answer is no. What is the distance between this? This distance, how much is this? sigma was 1 plus 1 over log t to the 9. Okay. So, this is about twice that right. This is order 1 by log to the 90 and this is bigger than log to the 1 over log to the 70. So, in that tiny window as you move around this and we are the in the worst case you are always shrinking that is a derivative it is always taking you down with that speed fine. And you start with a certain number here and it go down with that derivative how low can you get what derivative into the distance derivative into the distance essentially that is the lowest we can get. So, that is basically uh, log square t into log order log to the 90 which is 1 over log to the 70. Okay. Now, it is only a matter of fixing the adjusting this constant that we pick initially. See this constant is up to us to pick. This constant that we picked here C 1 is up to us. So, we pick it really really small constant. So, that uh, this derivative I mean this distance the constant here is so small that when you multiply this with this it is still order 1 over some constant divided by log to the 70 that is maximum it will shrink and that is smaller than this number. Then the reduction in quantity will be at most this. So, C prime is a fixed constant, C is up to us to choose to fix it, and that is it. That shows that in this, we can I can start from here and go all the way up to this without finding a 0, and that is the prime number theorem, which is that number of primes asymptotically approach x by log x.